I started to lose my breath. So I continued to tell my sister, I told her, I don't feel good. And that's the feeling that I had. I don't feel good. I feel something is wrong. And so I'll probably say two minutes later, I felt the feeling from my brain down to everything shutting down. And I died at that moment. Answer also, I didn't understand at that time because I'm 16 years old. I'm going to hell, 16? It, what have I done to go to hell? You know, I was thinking up on all these things. Have I you ever experienced something so terrifying it changed your life forever? Picture a 16-year-old, the age of dreams and discovery, where the world is an oyster waiting to be explored. This was him, an average teenager with an ordinary life until the day of the unforeseen encounter. On that fateful day, his life took a turn for the worse. An ordinary day turned into a nightmare when a traumatic incident led him down a dark path. The encounter was so shocking, so frightening, that it left him oppressed and possessed. Fear seeped into his life, replacing the excitement of youth with a dread that clung to him like a shadow. The enormity of his experience was beyond comprehension. It was like standing on the edge of a chasm peering into the abyss of the unknown. An average teenager one day, the next plunged into a nightmare he couldn't wake up from. Can you imagine living every day in torment for five whole years? Picture this, a young man barely out of his teens experiencing a nightmare that doesn't end when he wakes up. It's not a dream, but a cruel reality. For five years, he was trapped in the iron grip of torment. Every moment, every breath was a struggle. The pain was all-consuming, engulfing him like a ravenous beast. His suffering wasn't just physical, it was a mental and emotional onslaught that left him teetering on the edge of despair. Imagine waking up each day, not to the promise of a new beginning, but to the dread of enduring yet another day of anguish. As the days turned into weeks, then months, and eventually years, his hope began to fade. This wasn't a battle with a visible enemy, it was a war within his own body, his own mind, a war against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness. Each day was a fight for survival, a desperate attempt to hold on to the flicker of life that seemed to be dimming with every passing second. Loneliness became his constant companion. He felt isolated, cut off from the world, trapped within the confines of his own suffering. It was as if he was screaming in a room full of people, but no one could hear him. Five years of torment, each day worse than the last, with no end in sight. All those out there in the world, I'm just here to give my testimony today on how I died and went to hell. And by the grace and mercy of the Most High himself, I was able to come back and I'm able to give you this testimony. And uh, I'm going to try to keep it short. It might be two parts to it, or I might just try to get it all done in one testimony. So this started at the age of 16. So approximately 20 years ago, um, the story starts in Sacramento. So we were headed to a trip to Sacramento to my sister's baby daddy's house at that time, around that time. And uh, I ended up, ended up doing a drug. And I really didn't tamper with drugs at the time, but that was just something that happened. So I ended up taking this drug and we're headed there. And the whole time we are headed there, my heart is pounding outrageous. You know, there's a lot of things that are not going right on this trip as we're headed to the trip. You know, I'm starting to have car trouble when we're headed there on the side of the freeway and so forth and so on. So we get to Sacramento. It's me, my sister, uh, a couple of friends with us and, and you know, the girl that I was with at the time. So we finally get into Sacramento and I'm starting to feel my heart beat outrageous to where I cannot catch my breath. And we finally make it to my sister's baby daddy's house and we get to the porch and I literally can feel my heart getting ready to bust. And so I started to lose my breath. So I continued to tell my sister, I told her, I don't feel good. And that's the feeling that I had. I don't feel good. I feel something is wrong. And so I'll probably say two minutes later, I felt the feeling 
from my brain down to everything shutting down. And I died at that moment. And this is where the testimony truly starts. When I died, I was in a dark place, very cold and dark place. Um, and in this place, there was an entity and I didn't know who this entity was at the time. And, uh, and all I could remember at that time was shaking. I was just shaking, trembling, trembling. There's no thoughts. You can't speak in this place that I was at. There is no thinking in this place that I was at. And there was definitely no power, humanly power in this place. And this entity looked at me and he smiled. And I just remember shaking because I, I was in unbelief at what I was looking at. And I couldn't speak, I couldn't think any of the sort. And this entity put his arm around me. And at the time that he put his arm around me, it was just this feeling that came over me to where I knew who he was at that moment. And he had the whitest teeth, the most beautiful smile. And he put his hand on this door. Boom. And this entity was so powerful that I, when I gazed into his eyes, his eyes were all different kind of colors combined into one. He had the most beautiful eyes that I can ever, that I've ever seen on planet earth. And his eyes were so hypnotizing that this entity took my soul from my body and I was with him spiritually. That's how much power this entity had in this realm to where I didn't have any kind of worldly power, thoughts, nothing, nothing, just shaking, trembling in fear came over me. And when he had took my soul, he had took me to a place and in this place, I remember, it was all fire. And I never forget it to this day. There were m millions of people on a ceiling, millions. They had no faces, they had no skin tones. I can't describe to you any of their features. I just remember that there were millions of them hanging from this ceiling. And the ceiling within itself was on fire. And that ceiling, stretch for miles upon miles as in there was no end to the ceiling and i could just remember i'm still shaking while viewing all of this trembling in fear and at the same time of that my spirit is on fire also and i can remember that all of these people were on the ceiling upside down and all of their hands were waving in the air and they were all making an unbearable sound of, and I can't forget the sound to this day. The sound was, uh, 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 uh. and there were no, there's no speaking. There weren't people talking. It was just agonizing pain of hearing those sounds. Uh, uh. And he took me through that level. And then another level came, and then another level came, and then another level came. And I can remember seeing four levels of people on the ceiling upside down, millions and millions of billions, if not, in agonizing pain. Just, uh, uh, and everything was on fire. And I know after the four levels of what I had seen, boom. I come back and I can remember after, and you know, my sister was there with me after and our friends and girl and so forth of everybody that was there that witnessed it. And I can remember that I could not speak after for at least 12 hours. 
I remember staring at the ceiling for at least 12 hours and I couldn't speak because there was no thoughts, no words, no emotions, no feelings in me at the time. And boom, um, I'm thinking the whole time when I get home, you know, like, my mom's going to kill me. And uh, I was so scared to tell anybody of what I had experienced or witnessed because you know, growing up knowing, you know, being who I am, um, I knew that if you told people these things, you told the government these things, they would lock me up. And they would throw away the key. I'd be in a crazy somewhere, in a crazy home somewhere, in a psychic ward somewhere, locked up because of the things that I had seen and experienced. And then the demons in Hasatan, Hasatan, is what I call them, but you would call them the devil, then they would really have to go at me. So months after that, I must I muscled up the courage to tell my mom what I had experienced because I was in awe. I didn't understand what had happened, but I felt like everybody had lied to me. The, I wasn't a big church person. We didn't grow up in the church, but we always talk to the Most High. We believe in the Most High. And... I just felt like in my own spirit that anything that the pastors had said or anything that any church person had told me was a lie. That's what I knew in my spirit. And the Most High, after that, had gave me into the hands of the devil, Ha Satan, for a season. And when I had told my mother that, she just looked at me with no type of the emotion or the response I was looking for anyway. And she just told me, you know, son, you ain't living right. And that answer also, I didn't understand at that time because I'm 16 years old. I'm going to hell 16. What have I done to go to hell? You know, I was thinking up on all these things. I was in so much fear and trembling, even when I came back to my own body. And that's when the possession started. That's when the devil was with me for at least five years. And this entity, and I still had not fully known who the entity that I was dealing with, but the entity was also powerful that I, I kind of felt it in my spirit of whom I was dealing with. And this entity was smarter than any human. This entity had more power than any human or anybody that I had known at the time. And he would come converse with me and he would put his hand on my shoulder and he would tell me all of these terrible terrible, evil, evil, evil things about people. And not to the point to where he got me to kill someone or I was debating on murdering myself or anything like that of the sort. Just terrible, terrible things. He would bother me. And everywhere I went, he was there. You know, if I went to the store, he was there. If I took a walk down the street, he was there. If I went to the park, he was there. I didn't understand why he was bothering me. I didn't understand the spiritual battle that I was fighting. And not just him, but he would send minions, demons, to come bother me at night. I'd be asleep and I would wake up and I would have three demons surrounding me in a circle. And the things that I could remember about these demons where certain of them had animal heads and human bodies. I remember one had goat horns and sort of looked like a troll configuration. It, they just come in multiple different configurations. And they would come bother me and bother me. And they would talk to me. And they would just say the most evilest, wickedest things ever. And I was scared. I had no power to fight them. Anytime they would show up, I would just tremble in fear. My heart would get to pounding outrageous. I would just start shaking. And anytime Hasatan 
would come. I definitely didn't have any power to do anything. And I remember that though I was walking around on earth, half of my spirit was in a dark cave. And I don't know where this cave was at. All I know is that I can only see out of one side of my body. That's how I truly knew that he was in me. And of course, I was committing wicked acts and living wickedly at the age, of course. And I just can remember I could not see out of the right side of my body. Only out the left side of my body. Or it could have been the left side and the right side I could see out of. But I can only see out of one side of my body. And the other eye, I can only see blackness and darkness. And he would just steadily come and he would torture me and he would torture me by day and by night. And I can hear his voice as clear as you can hear any other human's voice. Um, he used to get me to do all kinds of wicked things, say and do all kinds of wicked things. And I can remember clearly as when he was with me when I came back that he told me we were friends. And that's a scary thing because I felt like I could not escape this entity. I couldn't get away from this entity. This entity would take control of my body and my movements and my thoughts. And I just remember that at one point I was surrounded by a legion of demons and people will say, pray. I used to hear people, you just need to pray and you pray and you know, you need to go to church and <laughs> they used to say all kinds of things. And from what I was shown about hell and the things that I've seen with this entity, like I said, he's more powerful than any human. You think that you can just recite some Bible words and he's going to go away. You think that you can just sit there and pray and that this entity is going to go away. That wasn't the way it was. And I'm here to let people know today that that's just not the way it works with this entity. This entity has deceived the whole world. That is the scripture. That is the word when he came down. And it's sad to say that most people in the world that they think that they can sit and just rebuke him or they can say this prayer or they can go to church and he's going to disappear. That goes away. You've been blessed. You've been saved. You've been healed and so forth. No, that's not the case at all with this entity. This entity is more powerful than any human being walking this planet Earth, than you and I and anybody. This entity knows the Bible better than any human walking this Earth. This entity knows more about the creation and about how the order of things operate than any human being on earth. So just reciting some words or do you feeling like church would help or save you from him? That's not the case at all. Once he has you in his grasp, you be luckily to slip away. It be by the grace and mercy of the most high. Honestly, I don't know how I got out of the situation, but when I did get out, I knew it was the Most High himself that had given me into the hands of the devil. And I didn't understand it. I didn't understand demonic possession. I didn't know why demons were conversing with me. I didn't know why I can continue to see demons. I, I just didn't know why. There was no explanation for it. And the more that I would be possessed, the more wickedly I would act and the more wicked things that I would do, of course. And I remember... A uh, short time after that, and I'm I'm young, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, up into these ages. And I would pray. Didn't work. Uh, I tried to go to church one time. Um, I felt more, and this is just my own spiritual discernment about it, because I wasn't a big church person. Uh, I believed in the Most High. Like I said, I believe in him. I believe in the Mashiach. Um, even then. 
but the churches I would go into for some reason, I would feel more demons in the church than I would as if I was walking around in the regular world. And the same demons that surrounded me, they would be in the church. So I cut church all out together. And I went one time, I tried it. It just, it didn't work for me personally. And because the most High had already shown me when I had got took into hell and I was given into the hands of the devil that going to church is not going to save you. It's not. Just because you go to church doesn't mean you're going to be ex accepted into heaven. Going to church, it wasn't the path to salvation the Most High showed me at a young age. And that terrified me. It scared me. And uh, so, like I said, this entity, he would just splurt all kinds of things out day and night, day and night, day and night. And the more he would torture and torment me, of course, the more I would do drugs. You know, I was lost. You know, we had, there was nobody feeding me any type of, you know, positive motivation. You know, no mentors, nobody telling us what's right and wrong it's and you know i'm born and raised in california by the way just to let you know born and raised so you know the lifestyle we live and the culture of california of course we already know is all out wicked within itself so but i mean at that time growing up we didn't you know i didn't know it we didn't know it and what really touched me is you know being told that you know you just ain't living right without any type of explanation behind it so my belief in heaven and hell at that time I knew that there was a hell I've seen it I felt it in my spirit and I've been took into caves and tortured to where I was in a dark cave in a cave don't know where the cave was it can't explain to you any of the sort but at a dark cave very rocky inside with bars as prison bars and just cold and I can remember having a chain around my neck and a chain around both of my feet that were connected to something. I couldn't tell what it was connected to. And these demons would walk past the cage when I was in this realm because I was possessed and I didn't have control over my own body, thoughts or mind. And they literally had me in a place where it's a different realm, where it's not a worldly realm. It's a realm like hell. You have no power. You can't talk. You can't think. There is nothing of the sort that you can do. It is only fear and trembling when you're in these realms. And there's something that comes over your spirit to where you just know that it's over. You just know that there's no power in you. You have no power here. And they would torture me. They would walk back and hit on the, the, the bars. They would say, oh, just making fun of me. How you would make fun of how people bully people. How people down other people. Make fun of other people. Just to say evil and wicked things to people to make themselves feel bitter. That's what they would do to me. And there was no escape for me. Nobody could help me. And I knew it. And I knew it within my own ruach, my own spirit, that nobody could save me from them. Nobody can help me from them. But I used to pray to the Most High. And even then, I still didn't receive the answers that I wanted to receive. And I would just do drugs. And one thing about what I've learned in the spiritual realm is they say that drugs are a gateway to other drugs. And I tell people, yeah, that's a true statement within itself. But what the principalities, powers, rulers of darkness won't tell you is, and the government themselves, is that drugs are a gateway for demonic possession. From alcohol to marijuana, down to any other class A felony drug that you can name, cocaine, so forth, of any drug out there in the world, even prescription pills, um, you name it, long as it's a drug that alters the minds, feelings, and emotions. These are gateways for demonic possession. 
And of course, they're not going to tell you that. They would say, oh, well, drugs are a gateway to doing other more powerful drugs. I tell people, nah, it plays a small part. So, and I used to be high all the time in my younger years, just living wickedly, like I said. And I wasn't myself. And I didn't tell anyone these things. That's the thing. I was so scared that I would not give my testimony unto the world or even unto my sister or brothers or so forth of any of my friends, family, nothing. I kept it to myself for a long time. I kept it to myself so long, here it is 20 years later that I'm giving my testimony about what I experienced about it and about what I've been through with Ha-Satan, as you would call him, the devil. And, you know, being shown hell, just this entity alone of taking my spirit out of my body with his eyes, most beautiful eyes, I reiterate it to you. That told me, that showed me within those moments who he was. That he's so powerful in this realm that he can take my spirit out of my body and it's with him. My Ruach HaKadosh was with him and he had my Ruach with him. And the things that I was allowed to see, I just knew that the way that we were living and everything that I was taught was a lie. And people mistake this entity for as an entity that you can just bypass or an entity that has no wisdom and knowledge. Like I said, I am not giving him any glory or power. This is just a testimony of what the Most High brought me through and allowed me to overcome because the Most High Yahuwah himself is very, very real. The Most High is very real. He exists. He's, he's the one in true living, King of King and Masters of Masters. And of Yashrael, of course. And I feared the devil more than I had feared the Most High at the time because the Most High had given me into his hand. So it was all just torture and torment, possession, torture, torment, possession. Like, I literally had a problem with everybody in the world at the time. I wasn't out there killing people and just doing reckless things like that of, of the nature. But yet and still, I was wicked, trust me. I'm not going to get into the brief details of California life, born and raised and being wicked and the life in the streets. But just know that I was wicked as all outdoors. And... Yeah, the, the devil, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And one thing that I do know about him is that don't take him lightly. Don't think that you have one up on this entity. Just don't, because you don't. And people always like to throw in there, oh, the devil's a lie. The devil's a lie today. We know that he's a lie, right? But people always want to throw him in situations to bring his name up as if the devil, it's always the devil. I'm here to tell you today, too. It's not always the devil. Sometimes he doesn't he doesn't waste his time on the small fish. I tell people that he just doesn't. That's not how he operates. He just doesn't come to everybody. He just doesn't shoo himself to everybody. That's not the way he operates. He doesn't have time for those he already has at all. Only those who he wants so bad and the Most High allows him to do what he does with those individuals. And I mean, you know, my testimony is long. And, you know, even sometime after that, I think it was about three years after I died, he almost took my life again. And, you know. And my sister was there with me. You know, my sister is a testimony to this. I have many people that could witness to my behavior and the things that happen. And they just, I was possessed. And I remember one time I was living in Fresno. And I was 18 years old. Still possessed, still going through it. Devil's still on me. And, you know, me and my girl had our spot at the time. And I was very young. You know, we were 18, you know. 
and she had got into a profession and you know I was nearly by myself the whole time and that's when they that's when they come and I remember sitting there one night in my house by myself I'm drinking I'm smoking and I'm living wickedly I just didn't know what to do at the time I was lost as all outdoors with no direction on which way to start which way to go and the wind was blowing heavy that night I can remember very heavy on the window, boom, back and forth. And, you know, at this time I had lived in Fresno, right across the street from the football stadium, you know, Bulldog Lane. And uh, it's known as an Asian bloodhood and so forth. And uh, so I'm drinking, like I said, and uh, the sweetest voice just whispers in my ear. It says, open the door. And I sat there for a couple seconds, I get up, I walk over to my door, I open the door, and I sit there and I stare at the wind blowing and just hard back and forth, the trees. I close my door, boom. And my Ruach must have had came back to me and it had told me, it said, something told you to open the door. You have just out another entity and from that point on I can just tell you that things got even crazier for me uh, even crazier for me um, I started to act more wickedly I started to act out in violence disobedience even more because I was afraid, because these entities made me afraid. And I had no power, none. And people, like I said, will tell you to do these things, do that, do this, do this. This is what you need to do. But how can you tell someone when they're in it? This is what you need to do. When these entities are allowing to take over your mind, your body, and take your Ruach, from the earth into a realm that you know not, that you can't escape. It is cold, it is dark, there is no talking. So my testimony of seeing people in hell, people didn't have faces, people didn't have skin. They didn't have eyes, noses, ears. There was no talking. Agonizing, screaming in pain. Uh, uh, uh. And I've seen other people's testimonies of going to hell and so forth. And, you know, I'm not here to take anything away from anybody's spiritual experience of, you know, what they've been through. But from the knowledge and wisdom that I was given about this place, there's no talking. You don't have no power. And all that braveness and courage and I'm a human and all that talking that doesn't exist in that realm. The only thing that exists is fear, trembling and shaking. And you have no control over your fear, trembling and shaking. You have no power. <laughs> None whatsoever. And I've never seen I've never seen heaven. The Most High has never allowed me to see heaven. I've never seen an angel. And not taking anything away from anybody's testimonies, like I said, but me personally, I haven't got shooed that goodness. But I was allowed and given into the hands of the devil, Ha Satan, for a time and a season. And he was with me ever since I died and came back. And he would not depart from me. At all, whatsoever, day or night, day or night, day or night, day or night. And at that time, you know, I didn't have any light in my life. Truthful. And, you know, me and my sister were always separated, but we were always close in our younger years, even up until that point. And. The devil used to tell me that he didn't like her, you know, that I had to separate myself from my sister, you know, 
And I didn't understand that. He kept me isolated from all people and all things of the world. And brothers and sisters, I tell you, do not take this entity lightly in any area or aspect of your life. Because hell is very real. And I know heaven exists. Because what I seen and what I experienced and what I was shown and whom I was given to, I know that the Most High exists. I know that heaven exists. And he is real, the Most High is real. All the glory belongeth unto the Most High forever and ever. His mercy endureth forever. His grace bounds towards all of his creation. And I'm grateful to be able to give you my testimony today. And the testimony is longer. It is. And I'm, like I said, I'll probably do a part two to this. Just to finish out the testimony. Because it doesn't stop there. But I just wanted to give you the first part of my testimony about what I was showing about hell and what I seen in hell and about me coming back and about how I was given into the hands of the devil and the demons to be tortured and tormented for a season and for a time and a time until that time came to an end. I even got to the point to where I wanted to commit suicide to end it. I did. I literally did. That is my confession on you. It was so much on my Ruach, I couldn't bear it. I was already thinking, if I got to deal with this entity and deal with it, why not? I'd just rather die. That's the way I felt at that time. I'd rather die and so he can have me forever. That's That wasn't my thinking at the time. It was just I wanted to end all the pain, the torture, and the torment. And the Most High wouldn't allow me to do that, of course. And I wasn't a suicidal person by far. But this is the things that Hasatan and his legion of demons can do. Hasatan alone. He doesn't need a legion of demons. He doesn't need his minions. He doesn't need his fallen angels hierarchy under him. Because in a worldly, he is the prince of the world. And in that realm, he has all power over humans. Believe me when I tell you. From the earth to that realm, <laughs> he has all power. And just don't take him lightly. Everything that they've told you about him, think the opposite. It's always the opposite. He's not going to show you what he's going to do. He's not going to tell you what he's going to do. He's the ultimate deceiver. So everything that you think that they told you about him, and this is what he does, and the devil this, the devil that, get that out of your head. Because <laughs> he laughs at that buffoolery. Because it's buffoolery. Because he knows that most people are already his. No reason to go get you, and no reason to tempt if you already belong to him. People are so far gone in their delusions and their vain opinions and the myths that they believe that they believe everything that Hasatan has told them about him. And why would he give you the truth about him? But the Most High has shewed me wisdom and knowledge, has given me into his hand. So therefore, I know about this entity and how powerful this entity is. With his eyes, he can take your spirit out of your body if he wanted to. <laughs> Think on that. If he's able to do such thing and was given power to do such thing, what else? Just think about what else. But this is just a short testimony to give you. And I'll probably make a part two to it. Like I said, just to complete my full testimony and to continue to give you the rest of the story of me given into the hands of the devil after I died and came back. So 
Thank you once again for listening to my testimony. I hope this reaches the people that it needs to reach out there. I hope the Most High blesses those who need to receive this to receive it. And um, I'm not here to bash anybody's testimonies about heaven or hell or anything of the sort. I'm just here to give you the testimony of what the Most High has brought me through and allowed me to see in whom he has given me to. And it's all praises to the Most High Yahuwah. And like I said, just be mindful, be vigilant of this entity. And shalom and blessings to those in the world. And I'll definitely probably be touching back with you guys. I'm not really a video type of person, not really a social media type of person. I really, I don't have social media. I don't make videos or drop videos, but the Most High has definitely put this on my mind and my spirit. And it's been there for 20 years. I just never mustered up the courage to do it until today. But I definitely think those who will get to see this video and who hearken on to this testimony and, you know, hopefully it reaches those who it needs to reach, you know, and those who have unbelief and those who want to say, no, you didn't No, that didn't happen to you. Why would it happen to you? And all of that other befoolery. I mean, you can you really save it. It, it. it doesn't bother me at all what people believe and what you don't believe, because I know the truth because his word is truth. And there is no greater truth than the word. So, like I said, shalom and blessings to those. And that was my testimony. Wow, what a tragic encounter. However, one thing I must point out about his description of the devil. While I do agree that the devil has immense power in that realm, he does not have all power. He can only do to us what the Most High allows him to do to us. I do agree that he doesn't waste his time with those he already has. That is absolutely true. That's why we must have a relationship with God and stay in his will, because the devil is going to be after us the most. He can only be in one place at one time, however, which is why he does need his minions. The Lord allowed him to go through this for a reason, because we will overcome by his blood and our testimony. Let's pray for this man that he continues to strengthen his relationship with the Lord, and that he goes from faith to faith and glory to glory. Let us praise the Lord for his great mercy. The Lord rescued and freed him from this hellish experience. It was a day of profound transformation, a day that turned the tide in his favor. Imagine the relief that washed over him as if a thousand pounds were lifted from his shoulders. It was a feeling of disbelief at first, like waking up from a long and terrible nightmare. The chains that bound him for five long years were broken, and he could scarcely believe it. Then came the overwhelming joy, the kind that brings tears to your eyes and a smile to your lips. The gratitude he felt was immense, for he knew he had been given a second chance at life. From the darkest depths of despair, he was suddenly bathed in light, free at last. How does one recover from such a traumatic experience? Well, this young man's journey of transformation, post his release from torment, is nothing short of inspirational. His newfound appreciation for life, his resilience, and the strength he discovered within himself are a testament to the indomitable spirit of humanity. When we lean on the Lord and let him lead us and set us free, we can emerge triumphant over every situation. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Philippians 4.13, his experience, though harrowing, molded him into who he is today, a powerful man of God ready to do his will. The Lord knows just what we need to come to him and he has mercy on who he has mercy. He emerged from the shadows of his past, a changed man, stronger, braver, and more alive than he'd ever been. Glory to God. Until next time, troops, pick up your cross and continue to fight the good fight. And remember, you have Christ on your side.